Have you ever dreamed of talking to your documents? No? Yeah, me neither, this was kind of a weird question. However, if you want to, now you can, thanks to private GPT. Hello humans, my name is Kenyo A. Overload, and today I will show you an incredible, insane tool. So get ready. And that pretty cool tool is called private GPT, which is an open source tool that allows you to have a conversation or ask questions to your documents using a local LLM. And all of that offline. That's right. So don't need to pay Pay for the ChatGPT API or even have an internet connection, everything can be done offline. Plus, since this is running on your CPU, you don't even need a powerful GPU to run it. So that's pretty cool. So in this video, let's install this super cool tool and I'm gonna show you what you can do with it. Are you ready? Then let's go. So Private GPT is super cool open source tool that allows you to ask questions to your documents without an internet connection using the power of local LLMs. It is of course 100% private since no data will leave your execution environment. You can use any LLM model that you want as long as it is using the GGML format and the tool supports a bunch of extensions. CSV, Word document, Evernote, email, HTML, Markdown, Outlook message, Open document, PDF, PowerPoint or just simple text documents. Basically pretty much all of the most used extensions. And installing Private GPT is actually fairly easy. However, even if the installation process is easy, that doesn't mean that you're not gonna have a few errors. And to begin the installation, you of course need to install Python. So if you haven't already, you're gonna click the link in the description down below, you're gonna arrive on this page, you're gonna choose the Windows installer, then install Python onto your computer. It's very easy, it's very simple. Just do not forget to check the box Add Python to Path, otherwise you're gonna have a bunch of issues. Then next, you're gonna install Git. So again, it's very simple. Just click here to download the Windows installation and install Git on your computer if you haven't done already. Otherwise, the Git clone command will not work. So then you're gonna go to the private GPT GitHub page. Basically, just click the link in the description down below. And then next, you're gonna click here and then click this little icon right here to copy this entire name. So then you're gonna create a new folder on your computer. I decided to call my private GPT, but you can of course just call it whatever you want. It doesn't matter. So then you're gonna click on the folder path type cmd, press enter, and here you're gonna type git clone, and then you're gonna press ctrl v to paste the name that we just copied, and then press enter. And this will clone the entire repository onto your computer, with the new folder called private gpt. So then back in the github page, you're gonna scroll down, and you're gonna click on this little icon to copy this entire line of code. Then it's in your private gpt folder, you're gonna click on the folder URL, type cmd, press enter, and then press ctrl v to paste this entire line of code, and then press enter. And this will download all the requirements that it needs to run the tool. Okay, so next what you need to do is download an LLM model. Now you can either choose the default LLM that they show you right here, which is the gpt for all j v13 groovy, which is not bad, and you can definitely download this model instead. However, I personally recommend choosing another model, such as for example the 13 billion parameter of Acuna or the 7 billion parameter Koala. Both of these models are really really good. And for this video, I will be using the GGML Vicuña 13 billion parameters 1.1 model. And of course, all the link for the models will be in the description down below. But if you want to download this model, you're gonna arrive on this page and then click here to download. And once you have downloaded the model, you're gonna go back to the private GPT folder, create a new folder, then you're gonna call models. And then inside that models folder, you're gonna paste that downloaded model. And also just in case you downloaded a model different from the one on the GitHub page, you're gonna come here and copy this entire name. So now you're gonna go back and you will see here a file called example.env. And what you're gonna do now is that you're gonna rename that file. So right click, rename, and you're gonna rename that file to simply .env and nothing else. But we're still not done because now we need to modify that file. So you're gonna modify the .env file. So right click, edit with notepad. And here we need to modify a few things. Now, if you downloaded this model that you see on the GitHub page, you basically don't need to do anything. You can leave everything by default. However, since we downloaded another model called GGML Vicuña 13 billion, we need to modify a few things. And the first thing that we need to modify is the model type. Since we're not using the GPT for all model, we need to change it to Llama CPP. And then the next thing that we need to modify is the model path, because of course we're not using the GPT for all J model. So here we're simply gonna select this entire name and replace it with the new model name. So for me, this is the name of my model. And then don't forget to save the file. And now, well, we are pretty much done. Yeah, that's it. 
Because now to be able to use this, you need to put your documents inside the source documents folder. So as of right now, there is already like an example, which is a simple text document. However, here you can put anything you want. There is absolutely no limit to the amount of documents that you can put. So like for this video, I decided to create a simple text document with a bunch of information about my YouTube channel, the name of my YouTube channel, the amount of subscribers, the type of videos that I create, and just a bunch of general information about my videos. The type of information that no LNM has. And now to run this, you're gonna click on the folder path, type cmd, press enter. And here, before we can start talking to our documents and ask a bunch of questions, we need to ingest the data. And this will basically create like a DB folder with a bunch of information about your source documents that the LNM model will be able to read when you're asking a question. And you need to do this either only the first time or each time that you put a new source document. But right now it is actually very very fast. And to run this ingest command all you have to do is type python ingest.py and then press enter. Oh that's very very nice. As you can see I have here an error when I try to run this command. An error that says cannot import name default ciphers from url lib3 etc etc. And if you have this error all you have to do is just run the following command. It took me a few hours to find and I will leave a link to it in the description down below. So if you have the same error as me, just copy and paste this command right here and then press enter. And now that this is done, let's redo the command python ingest.py and then press enter. And there you go. It was done in a few seconds for me, but in general for you it might take between 10 and 20 seconds per document. And now that this is done, we can finally have some fun. And now to run private GPT, all you have to do is just type python private GPT dot py and then press enter and there you go and now you can finally talk to your documents and ask a bunch of questions since now private gpt is asking us to enter a query so for example let's ask what is the name of my youtube channel and it answers AI entrepreneur, which indeed is correct. And then it are also gonna give you a bunch of source documents and basically show you where it found the information. Now, I personally don't really like that because there is like too much space. It's basically like taking too much space in my opinion, but don't worry, I'm gonna show you how you can disable this. And basically, yeah, as you saw, private GPT went and scanned the entire source document folder, looked for the information that I asked without much precision, without telling them where they should look, in which document, and managed to easily find the answer. And you can do this for everything. This tool is like super super powerful. You can very easily extract data, summarize a document, or find a very precise answer to your question. So for example, if I ask something like, how long does it take me on average to create a YouTube video? And we get this answer. It takes an average of six to eight hours for the research and testing portion of the video, and between one to four hours for the recording, with an additional four to five hours for editing and creating the title and thumbnail, which indeed is actually pretty correct. So as you can see, you can simply input an entire document and very easily extract information by simply asking some very basic questions. Like for example, let's say that you have a very complex and very long paper that you want to understand and summarize. You don't have time to like spend like hours and hours reading through so much complex stuff, well this is actually where you can use private GPT's power to get the info that you want. Like for example here is a paper about drag your GAN that you probably saw a few people talking about on YouTube. Like I personally haven't made a video about this but this was very very exciting, like very very cool. Well let's say that for example I want the summary of this paper. All I can do is just simply save it on my computer, then put it inside the source documents folder and since we have imported a brand new document we need to ingest the new data again. So again I'm gonna type python ingest.py and there you go in a few seconds a new document was ingested and now if I run the command python private gpt.py I can now ask a bunch of questions. So let's start with a very simple one for example what is drag your GAN which is the brand new paper that I just uploaded and we get this answer drag your GAN is a new approach for interactive point based manipulation on the generative image manifold of a GAN it allows users to drag any points of a generated image to precisely reach target points in a user interactive manner by clicking a few handle points and target points on the image and moving them to their corresponding target positions, etc, etc. And if you've read the paper, this is basically it. As you saw, basically private GPT took this entire text, took a few sources, and then created a short summary. And for this, you have also all the source documents that it was used to create the answer. And also what's really crazy is that it doesn't matter where the information you're looking for is located. So for example, if I go to the end of the document, and here for example we are on page 7, and I want to know more about like for example the effects of mask. So now if I ask for example, what is the effects of of mask, 
And we get this answer. The effect of a mask are to allow for the movable region to be masked while preserving the rest of the image. This is demonstrated in figure 8 and figure 15, where the head region of the dog is masked, but the rest of the image remain unchanged. And now if we look at, for example, figure 8, we indeed see that this is exactly what they're talking about. This is the effect of mask, which is really just so crazy, because what's really incredible is that when you look at the paragraph about effects of mask, indeed here it is talking about the figure 8, which is right here, but nowhere on the paragraph it is talking about the figure 15. And that is because figure 15 is on a whole nother page, like on the last page, as you can see right here, figure 15, effects of the mask. So if you understood what just happened, your jaw is probably on the floor right now, because yes, as I explained, it doesn't matter where the information is in the document, it can not only find the right information throughout the entire document, and then give it to you in a very precise and concise manner. I mean, this is really just insane. This is so useful for any students or anyone that wants to have more information about a complex document. I mean, this is just so cool. And all of that is running on your computer offline using your CPU, using a free local LLM model. I mean, this is just nuts. However, not everything is perfect because private GPT strength is also its biggest weakness. Because since this is running on your CPU, the text generation is really, 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 really slow. Like on average, it takes around 30 to 50 seconds to get an answer. Now, of course, very soon we might get a GPU version, which will definitely be way, way usable and way faster. But as of right now, CPU mode is basically the only way to run this. However, if you want to speed things up a little bit, if you have a pretty powerful computer, here's what you can do. You're gonna right click on the private gpt.py file, edit with notepad, and then on line 33, which says lama cpp, after verbose equals false, you're gonna type comma, and you're gonna input n underscore threads equals 16. And this will basically use more of your computer's power to accelerate the generation, which is really super, super useful. Oh, and then finally, one last trick. If you don't want to see all of those source text that it gives you after each answer, where it basically shows you where it got the information from, you can do this instead. In the command prompt, window you're gonna type python private gpt.py but here at the end you're gonna type dash s and this little simple command will disable the source text that you see after each answer so like for example if i ask like what is the name of my youtube avatar we simply get as an answer the name of your youtube avatar is k which is if you know me 100 correct and as you can see here after the answer we don't get all of those annoying source text we simply have the very simple question answer and nothing else which is definitely way more clean. So yeah, there you go, this was Private GPT, a super incredible amazing tool that you can use to easily find information in very complex documents. And you can do all of that for free, offline, using a local LLM model. And although it is pretty slow right now and it doesn't have a UI, I think that very quickly we might get a GPU version of that with a very beautiful UI, which will make this even more usable. Which is why it's the same with every open source software. This is just the beginning and everything will get better over time. But as of right now, it is already pretty usable and it's already really super cool to use. So if you can, definitely try this out because this is fantastic. And there we have it, folks. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you also so much to my Patreon supporters for supporting my videos. You guys are absolutely awesome. You people are the ones who support me so I can make these videos for you. So thank you so much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.